This section of the DVD deals with photography with digital SLR cameras using the original magic filter here in blue water. We're diving in the Red Sea and you will join us on three dives. First diving on a shallow reef, trying to recreate um, the product picture that we use on the front of the magic packaging. Then we're going to dive on a, one of the famous wrecks here of the Janis D at Abu Nuhas. And finally moving on to Ras Mohammed um, to dive at the tip of the Sinai Peninsula on the dramatic walls and with the schooling fish found there. This is our first dive site, a shallow reef in the alternatives. Coral gardens are ideal for filter photography, with colourful life forming attractive seascapes bathed in bright sunlight. Peter actually took the photo that's on the cover of the magic packaging on one of the sites in this area. The aim of this dive is to try and take some similar images of colourful corals and the gorgeous shoals of orange anthias. First and foremost on any filter dive is light. At the start of every filter dive, I check where the sun is and how it is striking the reef. A good tip is to hold your hand out in front of you, as this will show you the direction of the light. Armed with this information, I'll head off down the reef in this direction, searching for subjects. The next stage is setting the camera's manual white balance. I used to use a white balance card, but experience has taught me that generally the reef itself is fine. Once it's set, I'll take a test shot to check it's good. So in summary, I'll activate the white balance, fill the frame with an illuminated section of the reef and set it. Now I'm ready to shoot. I'll only need to do it again if I change my depth by more than a couple of metres. Then it's a case of finding subjects I like and working through a few ideas for compositions. I'll continuously review images making small adjustments to exposure and compositions to ensure I'm getting the results I want. A lot of wide-angle reef pictures lack fish because photographers don't spend the time to get them used to them. A slow approach will reward you with fish field frames. Here, I swam down the reef to purposely shoot against the light. As you'll see in a moment when we review the images, this produced much more muted colours. One technique I use for this type of shot is to conduct the anthias. By waving my hand I can send them scurrying back to the reef. Then I take my shot as the school reappears, with all the fish lined up symmetrically in a composition much more pleasing to the eye. It is not a trick you want to overdo as the anthias soon get bored. So first get your exposures absolutely spot on, and then conduct the anthias when you're ready to capture them at exactly the peak of the action. On any filter dive, it is important to explore the reef, searching for the magic combination of subject matter and lighting. Not everything is going to make for a great image, so when you find something suitable, make the most of the opportunity. Shallow coral gardens are one of the most beautiful reef environments, and are also one of the best places for filter photography. The continuously changing kaleidoscope of colours textures, shapes and species, makes this an almost inexhaustible underwater studio. And now we're going to return to the boat and review the photos from the dive we've just done. We're going to see them filmed on the laptop screen, so they're not going to look at their best, but you are seeing them straight from the camera. They're not the greatest because I was concentrating more on being filmed than actually taking pictures but it sort of shows you what some of the shots straight out the camera look like. Um, I think the blue is very nice and there's a nice accurate orangey yellow on the Anthias. Um, I think there, it was a pity that this particular bit of reef had too much sort of white open coral, um, but some nice stuff. These are actually the ones that I swam around and shot against the light and you can see how the nice saturated colour immediately sort of goes all, all washed out and you don't get the strong colours um, shooting into the light, the difference that makes. And these are just some of the shots of Peter swimming around as he was filming me. Um, and I was just sort of snapping away. Um, then I think, just to scroll down a bit and look at some of the others further down in the dive. Then later on in the dive, I was sort of, after we finished filming, I was actually playing around, shooting into the light, just trying some different effects. I quite like this sort of moody, highlighty effect you can get from shooting into the light with the filters. 
Um, and then I went off and shot a few corally corally scapes, um, which I think some of these are quite nice. Um, sort of nice effect. And then just finished off again playing around with some with some backlighting. Um, again, just shooting across the light with these sort of images, which I think have quite a, an interesting moody effect. For our second dive, we are heading to the famous and photogenic wreck of the Janus D. Wreck photography is definitely one of the best uses for the magic filter. When we photograph wrecks with strobes, we can only hope to illuminate small sections in each photograph. Filters are different and offer a way to add colour to much more of the vast superstructure, making it stand out against the blue. In fact, it was my desire to photograph the Janus D in full colour that led me to develop the magic filter in the first place. Again, the first task is to check the direction of the light. Peter and I have dived this wreck many times and actually know exactly which features are going to be illuminated at various times of the day. This dive is just before lunch and it's my favourite time for the classic stern shots. Later in the afternoon, the stern is more completely lit by the sun, but I prefer it now when the sun is angled across, casting shadows between the decks, revealing the three-dimensional shape. The best way to set the white balance on a wreck is to swim in close, filling the frame with an illuminated section of wreckage. Once it's set, you can then back up, recompose and shoot a variety of shots. I use manual exposure for wreck dives, as I find once it's set, it rarely needs adjusting. Here are a couple of unadjusted shots, taken using the white balance set from the corner of the wreck which you just saw. Although it's not that obvious on the video, perhaps the biggest problem on this particular day was the surge that made photography close to the wreck quite a challenge. We head forward in search of easier conditions. Because I've changed depth, I have to reset the white balance before shooting. Note that I use quite a downward camera angle for the shots. This ensures even illumination and also generates a richer blue background. The wider the lens, the more important this is. I'm pleased with the resulting image, but felt it lacked something. It needed a large object to add some scale, so I persuade Peter to stop filming and go and pose. Bubbles look great in filter shots, so I always wait for an exhale before snapping people. On a surgy day like this, I was very happy to be working with a compact rig, with no strobes to worry about. In fact, many photographers on our trip chose to skip this dive. Filters really bring out the best in wrecks, and if you can find a buddy willing to pose, in this case our friend Dennis, Producing pleasing images is actually very simple. Let's return to the boat and have a look at them on the laptop. Well, these are the photos from today's dive on the Janus D, um, taken with the Nikon 10.5mm uh, fisheye and the original magic filter. Um, this first shot is actually the shot from when I went in and white balance. You can see this is actually where I swam in and I sort of framed around here to set the white balance. And then just as I began to swim away, as you saw in the video, I just snapped off this photo just to check that the white balance had worked well. And obviously when this flashed up on the screen, I was pleased, I could see it did. Nice neutral color on the wreck, nice pinks and things coming out in the corals, and the blue water behind, um, good even illumination, looking nice for the filter shot. And then as I swam back, um, you can see Peter in the shot here, um, I started to take a few, few, few interesting images of the, of the boat and this is actually while Peter was filming me here um, and just began to take, take some different shots working these diagonals and then at this point I was just swimming back and taking pictures ready for the, for the, for the, for the camera. I then swung in and we, we started to take some of the classic angles of the boat. After finishing off on the, on the back of the boat for a bit, decided to head up to the midships area. Um, really um, to get out of the swell a bit, it was very swelly down there. Um, so by heading up to this area, it was slightly calmer. And I found this, this sort of nice setup here. And it's sort of it's typical with, with this sort of photo. Sort of go down, get the image right as you want it. And then sort of after you've just sort of checked the light and got the exposures correct, um, you then sort of, I waved to Peter and asked him to come around to the back there so to, to add a bit of a model point of interest there. And took a series of shots here with Peter just over the far side of the wreck to give a, give a sense of the, the very large scale of this, this large, large wreck. Um, we then swam up a bit further up the wreck and I did some pictures with Peter and some without um, and he was also filming me at the same time, this is just us swimming up. Um, further up here there's some conta old containers that you can get inside um, and they're quite nice for cave shots, this is one of the cave shots here. 
Um, and I think this is a very nice use of the filter. Um, traditionally in underwater photography, in a cave shot, you can light the inside of the cave, but the outside's got to be blue. With a filter, you can do the cave shot the other way around, and you can have the, the inside of the cave dark and silhouetting, creating a very dramatic frame. And then the middle of the image, um, the outside bit, having colour um, and detail, which um, the filter allows you to bring out. And I think this is a very powerful use of filters um, in these sort of cave shots, and it's something that I really like to do. Um, we tried another one here, and the swell was horrible in here. I managed to get Peter to swim past while I was getting washed backwards and forwards, and managed to grab a couple of shots, but they're not great. And then towards the end of the dive, we swam back down through the middle section. You can see here some more shots of those central ribs. Um, and then worked our way around, just on the way back around, swimming back around to the stern, sort of snapping all the way. And then started to, after just waiting for people to clear out the way and just waiting for my turn, started to do some of those classic three-quarter rear shots of the boat. So, but you can see here as I'm moving closer, this is unadjusted straight from the camera. Um, as you're moving closer and closer to the wreck, so you get more colour coming out. And you can begin to see now on this one um, how the, 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 the various colour colors load up. Um, how the, the colours have come out and all these, these, these bits of coral on the side of the boat there. Um, which just, just brings it out and how, how well that, that wreck pops out. In terms of pro processing, oops, sorry, wrong button. I probably just want to add a little bit of contrast to an image like this and perhaps just a little bit of brightness just to give, pick it up a little bit. I don't think the colours need much adjustment at all. It's just really that little boost in, in, in contrast that helps it pop out of the background. This is another series here of the wreck, um, just again showing the importance of getting closer. Although I was relatively close to the wreck here with the fisheye lens, this sequence just shows uh, what, what I want you to watch as I zoom in through this sequence, and it's actually a sequence of me swimming slowly towards the wreck. Watch how the colours on these corals just come out more and more as I get closer and closer to the wreck. These are all unadjusted files, and it's just those last, you know, just getting closer and closer really helps the colours come out. And obviously now I've swum much closer to the wreck, I can no longer get it all in. You can see how much colour is now coming through to the filter um, as you get closer. So it's, it's always important to use as wide a lens as possible and try and get as close as possible to get those good colours. For our third dive, we have come to Ras Mohammed at the tip of the Sinai Peninsula. It's spectacular and probably my favourite dive site in the world, but its unpredictable action and considerable depths make it much more of a challenge for filter photography. Two large pinnacles make up the site and they drop down vertically into the ocean. The walls are covered in soft corals and reef fish. Beyond this, anything can turn up. This year we've come a few weeks early and my personal favourites, the boha snappers, are not here in great numbers yet. But we are awarded by a mighty school of giant trevallies and all the other summer regulars, such as unicorn fish. This is action-packed diving so as a photographer, it's important to be prepared. I check the light and set the white balance at about the depth I plan to dive. This will probably be fine for most subjects, and if not, I can always tweak my raw files later. I'm shooting on shutter priority auto with about a stop of underexposure. Now it's time to sail off down the reef and see what's about. I spot some batfish and swim out to intercept them, mindful to keep the sun coming over my shoulder and onto them, illuminating them nicely. Next, I bump into giant trevallies. One advantage of shooting schools with a filter is that you can get colour on all the individuals. With strobes, the fish in the foreground can be overexposed, while those behind melt into the blue. Then I try some shots of a glassfish cave, but we're interrupted by a comical school of puffer fish paddling past. There's no time to reset the white balance, and I'm glad I'm on auto exposure. I just snap away and the camera does the rest. Then we drift on to the unicorn fish. To begin with, they're not lined up, but I wait a few minutes and once I'm alone and off camera, they do form pleasing arrangements. Finally, we head to the infamous toilets on the Yolanda wreck. I start by using the white bowl to reset my white balance before backing up and doing some shots with Dennis posing in the background. Now let's look again at the images on the laptop. Again, these are uncropped and unadjusted straight from the camera. Because of the unpredictable nature of, of, of this sort of diving with large schools and dramatic things and 
the sort of anything can turn up um, type dive site. I chose to use a Tekina 10 to 17 zoom, um, fisheye zoom, um, with the original magic filter to give me that flexibility. This is just some of the early shots I took while descending. This is just the reef itself. I think it's just a little bit lacking in contrast. If I just bring up the blacks a bit, you'll see I think it improves the picture quite, quite a bit. Um, bit there. And then just some more of the pictures. That's Peter there, just waiting for me to descend. And that's Dennis down on the reef and just flick through. Just playing around with this and then we were just drifting down the wall really looking for schooling fish and just taking a few snaps as I went. The first school encounter with these bat fish and we had a few passes with them. Got some nice images um, of them coming through. Um, just nice subtle colours, just bringing out their yellow fins and, 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 and separating them nicely from the background um, and still keeping a nice blue. Some more passes with the bat fish. I think these ones, they're just slightly going away from me, not so nice. This is a much nicer group. I think that's a really nice group there together. Um, you know, just again shooting similar sort of exposures and, and things. Here just shooting on f7.1, 80th second and I'm at 14 mil on this shot sort of halfway in the middle of the zoom lens. 13 mil, I'm obviously zooming out as I get, get, get to, drift towards these. 11 and a half millimeters. Keeping the same settings, but zooming in and out to, to help myself to fill the frame. Just a few more of these bat fishes, lots of these shots, so I'll just zap through them. Um, then I head, we headed up round the reef again to see if we could find anything. But on this section of the reef, it was probably, the light was just a little bit across the frame. Created some interesting effects, but not, but, but not ideal for filter photography. Here, really shooting too much across the light to reveal too many good colours. And then back out again on the outside of the reef, again with another batfish school. Um, there were lots and lots of divers all around here, actually, all outside of this frame. You can see the smudges on my sensor there. Uh, all outside of this frame, there were divers everywhere, but I managed to, to frame tightly and just have the school there without too many divers in the frame. I think you can see the beginning, actually, there's a diver here just about to come sliding in in front of me. Um, and some more of the school. This is the school of the, um, the, the GTs, the giant trevallis. They were a bit deep, they were about 15 meters this morning, so the colors on them aren't great. I think these shots are really crying out to be, to be dropped into black and white. I think they'd look great in black and white. That's one of Dennis with the school. Um, beautiful experience seeing them, and they look fantastic on the video. But they were just a little bit deep. Oh, there's one I, I knocked into black and white just to show. I think these are shots just a bit below the filter's depth range, but it doesn't mean the pictures are useless. It just means that they perhaps have to be used in a different way. So rather than trying to restore the colours, it's much more sensible to drop them into black and white. And there's Peter and Dennis um, just hovering above the snappers there as we went down the reef. Um, another pass with the batfish. I think there's one here where someone else's flash went off. You can see how, <laughs> how many photographers there were around. I actually had someone's flash go off in the middle of my exposure there. Um, that one's just a little bit blurry. I think I was um, being bumped into by another photographer at that point, so um, I wasn't holding the camera steady. And then we headed off down the reef and just, just taking a few snaps along the way. Some nice colours here coming out on the reefscapes, but that wasn't really our goal. And then we went off inside the cave for a bit and I took some photos of both Peter and then Peter and Dennis out through the window of the cave with the glass fish moving around. Um, it's a nice, pretty little cave, this on the side of, of Yolanda Reef at Ras Mohammed. Um, and there's Peter and Dennis having a cuddle. Um, and some more pictures of them. <laughs> um, it was annoying, actually, because it was quite nice to have two models posing. Um, it's a sort of an unusual treat to have two models. They often look very nice in pictures. But unfortunately, the glassfish weren't very cooperative, and it's very hard to get shots where you can actually see the two of them. And then really one of the highlights of the dive for me was seeing this, this massive group of mast puffer fish mo moving down the reef. They tend to aggregate this time of year for mating and you get the chance to see these schools. And Peter got some lovely video which I, um, um, which I, I saw this morning and looked fantastic with these guys. Um, and again, I think the filters really brought out the colours here, the slightly downward camera angle, bringing out a great blue. With schooling fish, it's always very important to, to get the formations, to get the alignment. The whole reason of a school is about fish being together. So any elements in the picture that can emphasize that togetherness are very important. Um, and being lined up is one of the best ways of emphasizing that. So trying to get pictures of schooling fish being all lined up together really helps the aesthetics of the image. Um, unfortunately, these were probably just a little bit deep for the filter. There's some nice colors coming through on the reef, but they're probably just a little, little touch deep. They're about 13, 14 meters and not really getting the punch that we were getting just a few meters shallower with the puffer fish. And then we finished off photographing the diver's favourite, the toilet out on the Yolanda wreck. 
I might actually use the toilet as a subject to white balance on. There's a suitable piece of white down there. Uh, obviously not on every dive site there are toilets to use, but it's amazing what subjects you can find to set the white balance on. I just did, just did a quick shot here with Dennis posing above the toilet. Um, I just did a few shots of that with Dennis on the, around the wreck. I hope that this section has shown you that getting good results with the magic filter is actually straightforward as long as you follow a few simple rules. If you remember just one thing, it's to shoot with a slightly downward camera angle and always check that the sun is behind you coming over your shoulder. This will ensure that your subject is fully illuminated and you'll get the most colour and definition in your shots.